Hello and welcome to Nithrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play Bitoku from the Devir games. To set the game up, use the side of the game board matching the current number of players in the game. This is the side for a two-player game and a solitaire game. You know it by only these two spaces for the turn order. And this is the side for a three and a four-player game. Now, for a three-player game, place this piece of the game board this side up, showing three spaces for the player order, and this side up for a four-player game. I'm going to set up a three-player game, so I'm going to use this side. The same applies for these spaces on the game board. Use the tiles with this side up for a three-player game and the other side for a four-player game. So this is how it looks like for a three-player game. Place the Great Spirit counter on the first space of this round track and the Pagoda marker on the first space on this face track. Separate these gate tiles by their type, by the letter on their front side, this is A, this is B. Shuffle each group of tiles separately and place a random A tile on each space like this on the game board. In a three player game we have two such spaces. And do the same with the B tiles. Again, here we have two such spaces. You can return all the remaining gate tiles back to the box. From these building tiles, take out all the tiles with this picture, these are ancient building tiles. And in a two player game and a solo game, Place one of those tiles randomly on each of these four spaces on the game board. Return the leftover tiles back to the box. In a three player game, place one of those tiles randomly only on these two spaces. And in a four player game, you don't use these tiles at all. Then shuffle these forest treasure tiles and randomly place one of those tiles in each of these five regions on the game board. Only in a two-player game, place one Kodama counter of a neutral player on the fourth space of each of these tracks. Then shuffle these building tiles, crystal tiles, dragonfly tiles and Mitama spirit tiles. Place those tiles face down in the designated spaces on the game board or somewhere nearby if that's more convenient for you. And then from each stack of tiles, fill all the spaces next to those stacks by placing those tiles face up. Take these Iwakura rock tiles, shuffle them and place one random tile on each of these spaces in the rock garden. Keep the remaining tiles nearby because during the player setup each player will take one of these tiles randomly. Shuffle the deck of vision cards and place them face down on this space. Shuffle the Bitaku cards and you can place them somewhere here on the game board. Then, as these icons indicate, place one card from the deck face up on each of these spaces. Place them horizontally, like over here. Separate these starting yokai cards from other yokai cards and set them aside. Then, take the remaining cards, shuffle them, and you may place them on this space on the game board. And again, place four cards face up on these four spaces. That means they will partially cover those Bitaku cards. With that, the game board is set up and now let's proceed to the player setup. Each player chooses a color and takes a flag of the chosen color and then one player board. Take your three dice and place them on these spaces, the spaces with this red icon, with these exact values 3, 2 and 1. Place your 11 pilgrims on your player board Three of them are over here in the area of the available pilgrims with the awakened side up and remaining eight pilgrims in these spaces with the sleeping side up. Place your six building tokens on these spaces and three player markers of your color. Place one of those markers on this starting space of the Bitaku path and leave some space to the right of the player board. You will build your Bitaku path here. One of those markers will be placed on the starting space of this scoring track and the last one on this turn order track. Take all the tokens of all players and determine the turn order randomly. Then each player takes one random Iwakura rock tile and places it on this space on their player board. 
One random dragonfly tile from the face down stacks, placing it face up on the designated space on the player board. One vision card from the vision deck, which is also placed face up next to your player board. And all your starting yokai cards, shuffle those cards and place them face down next to your player board. Place one of your Kodama counters on the first space of each Kodama track. Then take one wood, jade and one amulet, the green one with only one pip showing on that amulet. And a player 8 card or a sheet which will be very handy for your first couple games. And with that we're ready to start. In Bitaku this great spirit which inhabited the forest for eternity is about to leave that forest. Players represent Bitaku spirits and one of those Bitaku spirits will be chosen to replace that great spirit. The game is played over four rounds, four years, and each round, each year has four phases, four seasons, which is spring, summer, autumn and winter. Spring is just a game administration phase. In this phase you draw new cards and gain resources from the crystals that you would have here on your player board. In the summer phase players will take actions and make all the important decisions in the game. Then the autumn and winter phases are again just the game administration phases. In the autumn phase players will determine the new turn order and in the winter phase you will perform cleanup and the preparation for the next round. The game ends at the end of round 4, at the end of the winter phase. In this game players score victory points in many different ways, in many areas of the game board. And you can score a substantial amount of victory points from your player board and also from these vision cards, the objective cards. Every time you see this yellow fish symbol with a number, that indicates the number of victory points or the virtue points you score immediately. Victory points indicated by this purple fish indicate victory points that you score at the end of the game. And this grey fish indicates victory points that you lose at the end of the game. So over the course of the game try to maximize your in-game victory points and also your end-game victory points. The player with the most points is the winner. Each round, each year, starts with a spring phase. First, draw cards from your draw deck until you have four cards in hand. Keep your cards in your hand hidden from other players. And if your draw deck runs out, reshuffle the discard pile and create a new draw deck. If at this moment you would already have four or more cards in your hand, don't draw any new cards. Then after examining your hand, keep three cards in your hand and discard all other cards into a face up discard pile. If you would have any crystals in this area on your player board, those are the purple crystals with this icon at the bottom of the tile, take the rewards from those tiles, usually you would gain some resources. Keep your resources next to your player board in your personal supply. In the summer phase, players take turns, starting with the first player and then continuing in this turn order. On your turn you have to choose one of the following four options. First, you may play a card from your hand on your player board and take the action shown on that card. That will also unlock the die adjacent to that card. The second option, if you have at least one unlocked die, is to take that die and place a die in one of these empty spaces on the game board. These are called the forest spaces and they're shown below this river. Then you can take the corresponding forest action and one building action from the same area. Alternatively, you may place the die in one of these spaces over here. These are called the home of the great spirit. The third option, when you have a die in one of the forest spaces, is to cross that river. The die value will be reduced by one and then you can perform one of these available actions. The option number four is to pass when you do nothing. After you take your turn, it's the next player's turn and when all players pass in the summer phase, the summer phase is over and you can proceed to the autumn phase. Now I will explain all the actions in the game.
So the first option is to play a card. You take the card from your hand and place it in one of these empty spaces on your player board. You can choose any empty space and if the die adjacent to that card is still in this locked space, space with the red icon, move it to this unlocked space. If the die would already be unlocked due to some other game effects, keep it in that unlocked space. Then you can take the action from the card and if you would have a crystal, pink crystal in this space adjacent to that card, by playing the card you would activate that crystal as well. And if you take an action and you have the yellow crystal with the same action, you take the reward from that yellow crystal as well. You can take the rewards from those crystals before, during or after that action. So if I would play the card and take this build action, after unlocking the die, before, after or during that build action I can take additional wood and I can immediately score two victory points. Now, when you play the card with the action showing the resources, you may take the resources. Here you can take one wood or one stone. If you play a card with this symbol, it means you can take any resource. And since there's this number two next to the symbol, it means you can take any two resources. They can be the same, they can be different, that's up to you. When you play the card with two symbols, you can take both of these actions in any order you want. When you take the action with this symbol, you can draw one card from your personal draw deck and add it to your hand. Here we have two actions. You can either take a dragonfly or one mitama spirit. I will start with this mitama spirit. When you take this action, you can take one of these face up mitama tiles on the game board. To take the tile, you have to pay the indicated resources. This red hand indicates that you have to pay those resources. Then after taking the tile, score the victory points immediately. Here it will be one victory point. Then place that mitama tile on your game board and gain the rewards immediately. Again, on this tile, you can either take this reward or this one. I will talk about those symbols in just a minute. Don't refill this empty space, it will be refilled at the end of the round. When you take this action, you can take one dragonfly tile. Again, you can choose one of these four face-up tiles. If you choose this one, you actually gain one resource. If you take one of these two, you have to pay any resource. And place that dragonfly tile on your player board. However, in this case, you don't get those rewards yet. Only if you have a Mitama tile on your player board, you can create a pair of one Mitama tile and one Dragonfly tile. When you do, you can take the rewards from that Dragonfly tile and this pair stays connected for the rest of the game. It may be counted on some of the objective cards, the vision cards. This is a symbol for one pair of Mitama tile and a Dragonfly tile. Again, don't refill the empty space. You can also create a pair when you take the Mitama action and you take one Mitama tile. If you have a Dragonfly tile on your player board, you can pair those tiles and immediately activate the rewards from that Dragonfly tile. When you take this crystal action, you can gain one crystal. Take one of the available crystals, this one's for free, here you have to pay one resource, here we have to pay any two resources. Then take that crystal and place it on your player board. These yellow and purple crystals are placed on these spaces. After you do that, take the pilgrim, place it with the awakened side up in this area, this is the area of available pilgrims. Purple crystals give you rewards at the start of each round. Yellow crystals give you rewards anytime you take an action shown on that crystal. And the pink crystal gives you the reward when you play a card in the corresponding space. When you take an action with this icon, you can build a building. First, you have to pay the cost shown under the leftmost unbuilt building on your player board. So here it's just one wood. Then take one of the available face-up buildings and place it on any empty building space anywhere in this building area. However, you can only place it on the matching space. Here we have the red building symbol and red building space. 
So this building can only be placed in this space, it may not be placed on these spaces. Then take that leftmost token from your player board and place it on the building to indicate that it's yours. Then take the rewards shown on the tile immediately. Here you may move your Kodama counter in the same region two spaces forward and you take one amulet with one pip. Put that amulet in your personal supply. You can also take an amulet if it's shown on the action card as one of the actions. So here again you would take one green amulet. Similarly, when you take an action with this symbol, you can take the yellow amulet with two pips shown on that amulet. When you take an action with this symbol, you can gain additional Iwakura rocks. Those rocks are important source of victory points, but only if they have pilgrims adjacent to those rocks. So when you take that action, you may take any available Iwakura rocks from the game board. Again, don't replace those tiles. Actually, these are not even replaced at the start of each round. These are all the tiles available for the game. And then place that tile in the leftmost empty space on your player board. Then when you take an action with this symbol, you may take one of your available pilgrims and place it next to any Iwakura rock. When you do, turn it to the sleeping side, which means the pilgrim will no longer move from the space. It will stay there for the rest of the game. If you take this action and you place a pilgrim on the space like this, you have to pay a resource, any resource to place that pilgrim there. You may only place a pilgrim adjacent to any Iwakura rock. You would not be allowed to place a pilgrim, for example, here, because it's not adjacent to any other rock. When you take an action with this symbol, you may move your Kodama counter two spaces forward. You may move any of your Kodama counters and you may either move one counter two spaces forward or one counter one space and another counter one space. If you activate this Dragonfly tile, you may move your Kodama counters two spaces forward and then you may move one enemy Kodama counter one space back. So for example, I can move this counter two spaces forward and one enemy counter one space back. Remember, in a two player game, if you have a neutral Kodama counter, that may never be moved. If you gain this reward with the Kodama counter and the green arrow, it means you can only move the Kodama counter in the same region. More than one Kodama counter can occupy the same space. However, the last space on each track can only be occupied by one Kodama counter. When you take an action with this symbol, you can unlock one of your dice. That's in addition to unlocking the die by placing the card. So in this example, I could, for example, unlock another die here. You can find the same symbol in this area, which means if you permanently remove one of your available pilgrims from the game, you can unlock one of your dice. This is a free action, which you can perform anytime on your turn. You can actually perform that free action at the start of the summer phase to unlock your most powerful die and immediately take an action with the die on the game board. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And finally, when you take an action with this symbol, you gain the indicated number of movement points. You have to spend them immediately and you have three options. Over the course of the game, you may build this Bitaku path to the right side of your player board. For one movement point, you can move your player marker to the next space on that path, so to the next card. Then you take the rewards shown on that card immediately. If you have more movement points available, you can move to the next card and again take those rewards immediately. The second option is to start the pilgrimage. If you have any available pilgrim, you can take one of those pilgrims and place it on the starting space of the Path of Wisdom. In a solo game and a two player game, there's only one path. In a three and a four player game, there are two paths. The starting space is this one next to this gate. If you have more pilgrims available, again, for additional movement point, you may start another pilgrimage. You may even start that in the same starting space. That means that more than one pilgrim can occupy the same space if that space has this open circle. 
If you would already have a pilgrim in one of these Tory gate spaces, you don't have to start a new pilgrimage from the starting space next to the gate. You can start that pilgrimage from this crossroad space next to that pilgrim. The same applies to the spaces here. If you would have a pilgrim in this space, you can start a new pilgrimage from this space. Then if you already have a pilgrim on the path, for one movement point, you can move that pilgrim one space on the path. If you have that pilgrim at the crossroad, for one movement point, instead of moving along the path, you may choose to move to this illumination space and when you do, turn the pilgrim with the sleeping side up. It's the end of the journey for the pilgrim and you gain the reward next to that space immediately. Similarly, when you are at this crossroad, for one movement point, you may move to one of the Tory gate spaces. And in addition to the reward from that space, you also take the reward from the adjacent Tory gate. Here you can take one dragonfly tile and this yellow hand indicates that you can take it with a one resource discount. After that, flip the pilgrim to the sleeping side and again that's the end of its journey. If you already have a pilgrim in one of those spaces and you have another pilgrim at the same crossroad, you may not move the second pilgrim to the gate or illumination space at the same crossroad. That's not allowed. However, if there is a pilgrim of another player on that space, you may move to that second space and that only costs one movement point. And finally, in order to cross the first bridge, this symbol shows one Bitoku card. That means that your player marker must be at least on the first space on your Bitaku path. Only then, for one movement point, you may move to another space. Similarly, in order to cross the second bridge, the icon shows Bitaku card with number 2, which means your player marker must be at least on the second Bitaku card on your path. Then again, for one movement point, you may cross the bridge. The second option on your turn is to take one of your unlocked dice and place it in one of the empty spaces in this forest area. That's the area below that river. The other option is to place the die in one of these spaces which are called the home of the great spirit. So first choose one of your unlocked dice. If you wouldn't have any unlocked dice, remember you can permanently remove one of your available pilgrims and unlock one of your dice. Then after choosing the die, only now you can use these amulets to increase the value of that die. You may use any number of those amulets, each amulet increases the value by the number of pips shown on those tiles. So for each amulet, increase the value by one. By spending this one, I can increase that value by additional two. You may never increase that value to more than six, if you would use this kind of tile, you would only increase the die value to 6 and the rest of the pips would be wasted. Then you can take the die and place it in one of the empty spaces in the forest. Again, those are spaces below this river. Now you can take the corresponding forest action and one building action from the same area. However, you can only take the forest action if the value of your die is equal or higher than all other dice in this area. If this die would have the value 6, purple player would not be allowed to take any forest action. With value 3, the purple player can take the action of the value 5, which is this action or any action below that. In this example, purple player would gain 3 movement points. We have already covered all those actions you can find in this forest areas. Then you may also take an action from one of the buildings in the same area. You can take that building action before or after that forest action, so you may do them in any order you want. And to perform the action on the building, the value of your die must be equal or higher than the number shown on that building. You can take that building action even if the value of other dice in the forest area would be higher than the value of your die. In this situation, the purple player would not be able to take the forest action, but they would still be able to take one of the building's actions. If you use an action from the building which belongs to another player, 
that player takes this reward as a compensation. Those rewards come from the general supply. If you use an action from your own building, you don't get that bonus. Instead of placing a die in a forest, you may place the die in one of these spaces in this Home of the Great Spirit area. The only action you can perform is shown right under that space, but the order of the dice in these spaces will determine the new turn order for the next round. Unlike visiting the forest action, you may place a die of any value in this area and you can take the corresponding action regardless of the values of other players here. If you want, you can even place more than one die in this area. The third option on your turn is to cross the river if you have a die in a forest area. The value of the die must be at least two because as this symbology indicates, when you move a die across the river, you have to reduce the value of that die by one. However, if you move a die with value six, that value is reduced down to three. You can cross the river only if there are any empty spaces across the river. And when you move the die there, you can take one of the available actions. I will explain these actions in just a second, but after taking that action, cover it with this Hikaru marker, which makes that action unavailable. That means that if the next player would cross the river, they would only be able to choose one of the remaining actions. After you cross the river, the space in the forest is now available for other dice. When you take this first action, you can take the corresponding Bitoku card from this area and extend your Bitoku path. Again, don't replenish the card, it will be replenished during the winter phase. Similarly, when you choose this action, you can take the Yokai card from that location and add it to your hand. With this third option, you can choose two different actions from these four actions shown on the space. You can move one of your Kodama counters, you can take one Iwakura rock, you can place a pilgrim next to one of your Iwakura rocks, and with this action, you can take new vision card. To do that, draw two cards from the top of the vision cards deck, secretly look at those cards, and you can choose one of them and place it face up next to your player board, and return the other one to the bottom of the vision cards deck. If you wouldn't like any of those vision cards, you may actually return both of them to the bottom of the vision deck and take any one resource from the general supply as a compensation. After you played three cards during the round and after placing all dice from the player board on the game board, if you cannot or don't want to cross the river with your remaining dice in the forest, you may pass. When you pass, your summer phase is over and when all players pass, you can proceed to the autumn phase. In the autumn phase, determine the new player order for the next round. You do it based on the dice placed in this Home of the Great Spirit area. The player with the die in the highest space would go first, then player with the die in the second highest space would go second, and players without any dice in this area would be pushed towards the back of the track. If in this example only the brown player would have dice in this area, brown player would be the first and purple and white player would be pushed towards the back of the track. So this would be the new turn order. Then we can move to the winter phase. This is a cleanup phase and preparation for the next round. And the first step is to take all your dice back from the game board, but don't change their values. Place them on your player board in these locked spaces. Then in this new turn order, each player may decide to remove one of the cards from the player board and score the victory points for that card. You can only do that if you have total five cards together in your hand, on your player board, in your draw pile and the discard pile. In other words, you may never have less than four cards in total. So if you do have at least five cards, you may choose one of the cards on your player board, permanently remove that card from the game and score the victory points shown at the bottom of that card. Here you would score three victory points, here you would score six, 
and here you would score 3 victory points for each pilgrim you would have on the illumination space on the path of wisdom. With that you can score maximum 12 victory points. If any of those symbols would be unclear, you can refer to your player 8 sheet, it contains all the icons with all the explanations. After you remove the card from the game and score the victory points for that card, place it in this area above your player board. The card is no longer available to you, but it may be scored for these Iwakura rocks. Then take all the remaining cards from your player board and move them to your discard pile. Advance the round marker to the next round. Move the pagoda back to spring. And then prepare the game board for the next round. First, remove any remaining yokai and bitaku cards from the game board and draw new cards from the respective decks and place them on the corresponding spaces. Then remove all the Hikaru markers from the game board and return them to the general supply and refresh these game boards. First, if there's any tile in the space with this fire icon, remove that tile from the game, then slide all the remaining tiles forward and refill the empty spaces with the new tiles from the face down stacks. Repeat the same process for all four boards on the game board. However, these Iwakura rocks are never refilled. The game ends at the end of round 4, at the end of the winter phase. To perform the final scoring, first take all your income again, so take all the rewards from your purple crystals. Then the player in the first position on the turn order scores 3 victory points. Note that at the end of the game, we score the victory points with these purple fish icons. Then score the victory points for your Bitaku path. You score the victory points based on the number of cards with the unique color of this symbol. So here we have four unique colors, dark green, blue, red and light green. Use the table on your player 8 sheet for four different colors, you would score seven victory points. Then score the victory points for the Kodama tracks. The player in the first position scores the number of victory points shown on the first position on the track, player in the second position would score the second number and so on and so forth. In case of a tie, add the numbers together for those positions and divide evenly round it down. In this example, purple player would score 6 victory points and white and brown player would score 4 plus 2 that's 6 victory points divided by 2 would be 3 victory points for each player. Here we would have 5 points for white player, 3 for purple, 1 for brown. Then score your Iwakura rocks. Each Iwakura rock scores 1 point for each item shown on that rock. In this example, this tile would score 1 victory point for each of your red buildings and each of your olive buildings. So if the purple player would have the red building here and the olive building here, those would be two victory points for that Iwakura rock. Now this Iwakura rock would be scored once for this pilgrim and once for this pilgrim, which means that rock would bring four victory points. Now we have another Iwakura rock here with another red building symbol. So you can count those red buildings again. If the purple player would have one red building and no dark green buildings, this Iwakura rock tile would score one victory point and again one victory point for this pilgrim and one victory point for this pilgrim. There are two other types of Iwakura rocks. This one scores Mitama tiles. It will score one victory point for each green Mitama and one victory point for each purple Mitama. Then these types of Iwakura rocks score victory points for yokai cards and again based on these symbols which are shown on those yokai cards this tile would score one victory point for each of these symbols on your yokai cards and one victory point for each of these symbols count all the cards you have so the cards in your hand in your discard pile in your draw pile and also the cards you have removed from the game in exchange for scoring the victory points from those cards then add up the values on your dice, here it's 8, and the number of resources, here we have 6 resources, don't count these amulets. So 8 plus 6 is 14, 
divide by four, round down, that would be three additional victory points. Then score the victory points from your vision cards. Unlike Iwakura Rocks, each item on these vision cards can only be counted once. So here you need to have two pairs of Mitama and the Dragonfly tiles. This indicates at least one step advancement on the Bitaku path, and this means you have to have at least one crystal. If you meet all the requirements on that card, you would score six victory points. If you don't, you lose two victory points. Now, the second vision card requires another step on the Bitaku path, so you would have to have two steps on the Bitaku path to score both cards, then at least one building build, and then another pair of Mitama and Dragonflies. Since Purple Player only has two pairs, and these cards require three pairs in total, one of those vision cards will not be fulfilled. So, for example, for this one, Purple Player would score six victory points, and for this one, they would lose one victory point. Then add these victory points from your player board. You gain the victory points for all the crystals you place on your player board. Here it's two victory points for each of them. And you also score victory points for each of your buildings built. Then sum up all the victory points and the player with the most victory points is the winner. If during the final scoring you exceed 100 victory points, you can flip your flag to the other side. There are a few small differences for a two-player game. First of all, you use the other side of the game board. That side only has one path of wisdom, and this is the starting space of that path. And when you place a die in this forest space, you can take the forest action and the building action normally. But then, when you move the die across the river, from these two spaces, you can reach the action spaces in both of these hill areas. And finally, when you place your die in this space, in the home of the Great Spirit, it's a new action. You can only place a die of a value 2 or more, because once you place the die there, you must reduce the value of the die by 1. And then you can choose any die of the other player in the forest spaces, so not in the hill spaces, but only in the forest spaces, and use the corresponding forest action with the value of that die. So here it would be three movement points. You may only take the forest action, you may not take the buildings action. So that's how you play Bitoku. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash